Hey, everybody. Yes. Welcome to another episode of Unstoppable. My name is Ralph Gray. I'm so glad to have you guys here. Today, I got a friend of mine, Chris Hutchinson from the Tribuche Group. Chris, what's going on, man? Hey, we're having great weather here in Colorado, and I'm enjoying life. How about you? I'm doing great. Did I say that right, Tribuche? Tribuche. That's right. You can say Tribuche. You can say Tribuchet. Tree and Bucket. They all work. Tribuche Group. And so you're out in Colorado. It's October. Is it snowing yet? Uh, it has not snowed yet, but you know, we, we get these, see, it's a secret here today. It's going to be 65, 32 is a low. It's just gorgeous for a while. Yeah. And then we'll get two days of snow and then it goes away and then it'll be better. Yeah. But you know, yeah. uh, it's, it, it, it'll be nice. It's definitely fall finally, which is yeah. a relief. Sounds like Jersey. We woke up today. It's 50 degrees, high 78. Uh, and Sunday, it'll be a chance of snow. It's ridiculous this time of year, but you know, you know it's fun. I love that. I love that variability. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun, man. Good to have you on the program. We've been talking, guys, and uh, he and I have share in common. We both like to ride bikes, but he rides it to an extent that I can't ride, and we're going to talk about that a little bit. <laughs> Not only here to talk. Tell us what the Tribuche Group is, man, for my listeners. Well, the, the easy way to remember is uh, that we are an organizational improvement firm, and we help leaders and teams work together better. Yeah. Organizational improvement firm. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the importance of, of teamwork and organizations working together, it can't be um, stressed enough. Um, and I, I have to ask you this. I was I a was police officer for years, and I can say this now because I'm no longer there. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the men and women who didn't play organized sports mm-hmm. and learn team concept, I got mm-hmm. a whole thing about this. They were the hardest people to really um, get on board with this team concept in Oregon. It's, do, do you find any parallels with that? Well, that? it depends. I think you're right, Ralph. And it depends on how the sports are played and what kind of sports they are. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I would say a lot of it, it comes down to the coaching and leadership that was. If it was a uh, do what I say, not what I do, you know, run 10 laps because you looked at me funny, you know, that kind of thing, then I find that doesn't necessarily help people. But if it's an right. experience where people see they're part of something bigger than themselves, yeah. that they their contributions matter and their unique contributions make a difference just as everybody else's unique contributions. Yeah. And it's about communication, understanding what we're doing together and helping each other to get there together. Then absolutely that that makes yeah. a difference. You know, with the people that have been on teams that are good teams, it, it, it can make all the difference for their lives. And if they're on teams that aren't so good, basically, well, and I can give you share experience of how I got into this thing through that, but it can make your life pretty miserable. Well, talk to us how, how about how you got into this thing, man. I, we want to know yeah. the origins of it. Okay, the origins. Yeah, so so I, I frequently get introduced as a recovering engineer. Okay. <laughs> because, you know, I, I started out in engineering. You go fix problems. You go do stuff. And, uh, I, and I got into the Air Force because I went through RTC. And here okay. I am, a brand new officer learning the ropes. And I was on a team. Ralph, this team was not fun. I mean, I, I my dad was in the Air Force. I thought I saw all the camaraderie and the and, and the cooperation and the bigger than the self and all the stuff I just talked about. Right. And I was like, I'm going to get that in the air force, you know? Yeah, and it, yeah. we weren't getting that. It was, it was dog eat dog. It was, don't put your head up is don't say anything. Your messengers get shot. Wow. Take care of yourself, buddy. That's all it is. You know, <laughs> the, the, you climb to the top of the crab pit, the yeah. crab pot or whatever, yeah. you know, clamber over whoever you have to. Yeah. And I did, I really was very unhappy. And I luckily, because they have rotational leadership and things change, I was on a different team. So I was on a team where I showed up and everybody was like, Hey, here's what I do. Great. What do you do? Great. Let me help you out. Here's what we're trying to do together. I'll help you. You know, it was completely supportive and we had clear goals and we knew where we were going together and they were just made up. They were really mission oriented. You could see the connection between what I did and what mattered. Okay. Ralph, to be honest, the only, there was only one person that changed on that team. Who was that? Who was the leader? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And so I really quickly went from in team A, my engineering skills weren't being used. I wasn't being, I, I hated life. It was not fun. Okay. Team two or team B, I loved coming into work. It was like, I stayed long. I helped out. Right. And yeah. I'm going, you know what? It, if I, it doesn't matter how good of an engineer I am, if I get on a team A. Right. Right. Yeah. In fact, everybody was diminished. Right. So then I was like, wait, how do I do more of this? Of course, it helped that I was in an officer position. So I was supposed to be leading anyway, and I'd had yeah. leadership training and yeah. officers were leading us, but different ways. Right. 
And so that's what really originated me, just sort of becoming a student of leadership. What can I learn from others? How can I learn to be a better enable of others? And then how can that eventually came to 20 years ago um, in February, I started this company to say, how can I help support leaders outside of a single business to be the best they can be and to help teams work together to get it? And the funny part is most of the times people don't realize that they could be better. Mm-hmm. They're not intentionally trying to make it suck. Right. But we don't get really trained well. We get trained to be good, whatever we do. And then they throw you into leadership and say, just lead. And that they're really different skills. Yeah. 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 You know, what would you say was, was uh, I, I've been, been trained in that great leaders multiply themselves. Yes. Um, you know, and I, I, I count that as a, a great skill. And what I try to get across to, to, to all of my listeners is your job is a lot easier if you're building the right team. Your job is a lot easier. You're giving away the secrets, Ralph. I don't know if you should be doing that. Just... <laughs> you're building, you know, and there, and, and, you know, and I know, and I know that uh, those listening who are leading, uh, there is an element of trust. You might train somebody and they might leave. Well, good. It, they just might leave. That's, yeah, yeah. That's fine. What, how you've trained them is still going to impact how they go. They, they just really are still a disciple of yours. Anyway. You yeah, know? absolutely. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, yeah. So, so are you a fan of the Ted Lasso show? You know, I am. And I really, really am. And uh, I didn't know I'd ever admit that publicly on a podcast. I've watched oh. every season. It, it's pretty well anyway Every so episode. so what you just said made me think of and we actually put it in a blog post we were my team and i we were kicking things around so yeah. leslie the communications manager the number two in the club yeah guy right and uh, i'm trying to remember everybody's name but but the protege sort of doing her own thing is now going to branch out she's going to do her own marketing company yeah i know I, her name yeah i i think but i know you're talking about yeah. anyway yeah and, and and uh leslie said he said let's see if i get this right you know um you know Good mentors know that you'll move on yes. and great mentors hope that you will hope that you will. That's right. And, and that, that's what it is about, you know, and, and that's, you know, when I wrote the book ripple, it was really about, it's not about what I do. It's yeah. the energy that I'm doing yeah. things with, how yeah. it affects other people, how they affect other people. And it goes on and on and on. And yeah. you can't, you can't put that in a little box. No, you can't. You've got to let it out. You got to let it out. I have some college students that work here for me and I'm pushing them out the door with love. Mm-hmm. You know, you I'm never going to pay you your worth. <laughs> what you what what you are really valuable at doing. The universe needs you. you. Yeah, let me help you get there. I, I love awesome. them as they're my own children. I yes. really do. But yeah. let, my fear is that you get comfortable walking in here looking at me every day. Mm-hmm. I don't want that to happen. And I don't think any really great leader really wants that to happen do they no no yeah no i i I think leadership is about it's about influence and changing the world it's not about sitting on the top of it right yeah yeah, yeah to, to me, at least. And, and I, Patrick Lencioni, a guy I really like, uh, he, he follows his stuff. We use some of his things, his models, and tweak them up ourselves. And and he just he recently wrote a book called The Motive. Yeah. I don't know if you okay. know about that one. No. Yeah, it's it's essentially, a, it's one of his fable stories, because he says people don't read books unless there's a story there. Right. You got to have a story. got to tell gotta a story. Them. People actually finish it, right? And, yeah. and it, the, the shortcut is that there's a difference between reward-centered leadership and responsibility-centered leadership. Mm-hmm. And the ROI, the, the socially acceptable ROI for uh, return on investment for responsibility center leadership is pretty crappy. Yeah. You're going to spend a lot of time worrying. You're, you, you let people go and then you struggle. I mean, there's a lot of things that are going to be hard about it, yeah. but ultimately, at least for me, that's where I am. Yeah. Reward centered leadership is I'm on top. I get to make the rules. Um, I'll sick my lawyers on you. You know, it's mm-hmm. about having the golden chair and how much yeah. can I put in my bank account, you know? Yeah. And yeah. while as a society, we reward that to some extent and right. you should taking those risks be rewarded. Right. However, like what's first, you know, is it the responsibility to help develop others and make a difference in the world? And this is not a fuzzy, soft difference, Ralph. We're not, we're, we're talking about like real impact to people, communities improved, you know, uh, companies doing things that make, make the world better, you know, cleaner, faster, whatever. Well, you know, um, and I I know, you know, who John Maxwell is. um, Yes. Friend, friend of, friend of the show, friend of mine. Oh, good, good. Um, mentored me. He he said something and it really, and this was years ago and he keeps saying it. He said, listen, um, success is great until you experience significance. 
Mm-hmm. And we become mm-hmm. more and more significant the more and more people we train out in the world to be world changers and leaders. It's it, it's okay. Some people come to stay. Some people come to go. Some people come to grow. And mm-hmm. uh, it's it's okay, man. And I think I think leadership is really exactly what you just said, man. Be moving mm-hmm. from success to significance. Yes, we we do make a living. Yes, we mm-hmm. we make sure that we have shelter. We make sure that we're clothed and we have heat and water and we're able to enjoy life. But that is not the the ultimate goal of success. I think the ultimate goal of success and in leadership is have you poured into enough people who are making an impact in society? If some, if someone's better mm. for knowing you. I, I, I love that. I th- you know, in fact, one of the things I'm, I'm doing right now, and I've, I've thought about it for a few years. I, I, I uh, when I went out to write my book, cause I didn't really want to write a book. It was, uh, we were handing out these like really nice folders that would cost us $5 each, you know? And sure. I'm like, damn, I could, I could give them a book for that or yeah, something, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I had a bunch of articles. So I put them together. I thought six months, yeah, right. six years, six years later, <laughs> I finally had this frame where, yeah, yeah, I was like, right. you know, the, the pieces of, well, I need to know myself and be in action as a leader. Yeah. And I need to be able to build a relationship and equip you for what you're made for. Yeah. And then we together can go be mechanics that we didn't design the organization and, and tweak it till it runs great. You yeah. know, and, yeah. and that's that that's the ripple thing, right? And and I had to call it ripple lead R- ripple is the book and it's about right. leadership. Yeah. A- and I had a bunch of people that that looked at it since yeah. uh, it's been a few years, and and they're like, Yeah, but that's I'm not a leader. Mm. Like I, I'm not a leader. And I think e- even that thing you said about success and significance, a really yeah. good team member, like when I was on a team, that team B. I felt significant. I felt yeah. like we were making a difference and I felt successful, even though I was not the leader, I was a member right. of right. that team, you know? So yeah. I think it's everybody. So, yeah. so I'm starting to write uh, a ripple team or something where it's basically the same principles of what I just said, but it's without authority, you know? And so I can go, well, that, that's a shared responsibility as humans yeah. together. I can, you know, I'm not over you. Yeah. I'm beside you. Beside and you. what can we do together, man? Yeah. Let's talk about let's talk about Ripple a little bit more, man. Sure. Uh, for, first of all, where can the audience find the book? Ah, well, let's see. Audience can find it on Amazon. It's fun because uh, we we had several boxes of them like lost in a shipment, and so I don't know who found them, but. So you can, you know, their, their prime price is some crazy thing, but if you look around there, you can find us. You can also rippleleader.com. You can find them there. Okay. we got a book and a workbook and it's really built. I mean, I wish I'd been able to have a cover to where it was kind of beat up looking and had that yeah. rubber band around it, yeah. you know, like yeah. a field book kind of thing. Yeah. And it's really, it's, it's a, a field guide for leadership that works. And I meant that to people get the hands on and, and leadership that's going to make a difference. Now, you know, is, it, double is meaning. it built for a leader to go through with his team. I know you said there's a workbook or is it just right. a personal? Well, uh, you could do it either way. We've had, we, in fact, there's a couple of uh, MBA programs that have taken it on and use it as for their leadership guide, which is, that was very uh, hum- humbling and, and yeah. also felt great. You know, like, yeah. wow, it's very pragmatic because it's like, here's, here's a concept that fits in this bigger framework I just told you. That's something like, um, let's just say, know where you're awesome. Okay. Like if I know where I'm awesome, I will be more open to where you're awesome because otherwise, if I think I'm normal, if you're like me, you're normal. If you're not, you're abnormal. Yeah. Right. And then it has a little section that says, take a couple of these assessments, kind of assessments, and and just reflect on how you're special so you can appreciate where other people are special. That little section doesn't take a lot of time. So people can do it themselves or they can take a group through it. Um, And the workbook's just meant to like, I I built the book so you could write in the margins. Okay. But people didn't. So I I made a workbook so people can actually write on that one. Okay. Very good. Very good. Guys, get that book. <laughs> it's yeah, fun. I will send you I mean, a copy, you, Ralph. I will send you a copy because um, I think you might have fun wonderful. with it. The, the thing that made me feel so good is um, there was a lot of leadership books, and you probably know them. We won't say names, but they're right. like, I, I'm great. You can be too. Just be like me. Yeah. And then there's the other ones that say, like, here's how to give a great handshake. Right. And, and there was not a lot. I mean, John Maxwell has some stuff with the maxims yeah. and stuff yeah, yeah. put in, mm-hmm. you know, but I, like, what's a framework? Because I saw clients working in one area where they'd use one concept and another area where they use another concept and they were incompatible philosophically. Yeah. They were fighting, they were rubbing each other. I'm like, but these don't fit together. And he's like, yeah, but the people got success with them. Yeah. So, yeah. so I've kind of put that together and, and, and uh, uh, you know, just having something where somebody can feel like, I can see where I'm strong as a leader and here's where I can develop. And that's all I wanted people. The guy that helped me one of the most, you know, cause I got kind of bummed out partway through. Okay. I wasn't sure I was going to finish it. Cause 
how many leadership books are there? Ralph? I've got like, I've got, I don't know how many linear feet on my bookshelf. Yeah. And he said, he told me, he said, you know, I read the book and he goes, it felt like you were sitting across from the kitchen table talking with me about what I could do. And that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to help people yeah. where they were, not yeah. tell them again, beside, not above. Right. I think that's right. such a difference. Yeah, it is. And what I want people to understand, somebody's listening and saying, I'm not a leader. No, you are. The first person you lead is yourself. Absolutely. And so, and so this book, this workshop, leadership training is for every individual because the first person you lead is yourself. Sing if it, you, sing it. <laughs> yeah, if you are alive today, right? If you are listening to this podcast, you listen to just two guys talk, you are a leader because you have to lead yourself, lead yourself into good habits, lead yourself into a good diet, lead yourself into better behavior, better habits. The first person you lead is yourself. So this, when we're talking leadership, we're not talking to supervisors. I hate mm -mm. using the term managers. I'm yeah, me too. To you, the yeah. individual. Well, if not you, who, Ralph? Right. Who's going to do it for you? Who's going to get you out of bed, right? So, yeah. and, 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 and leadership is more caught than taught. It's, it's something that when, you, when I show up a certain way, in fact, I can tell the impact of my leadership by what I see in others better than I can see in myself. Wow. Say that again. Say that. Okay. I can see the, the impact in leadership in others more than I can see it in myself. Because yes. if, I'm, if things aren't happening out there, that's because there are things not happening in here. And the cool Ooh. part is I can do stuff in here. I don't feel empowered, right? Yeah. So remember, remember that six pieces I told you about, you know, yes. we'll be the mechanic and people normally start at that far end. They go, well, we got to make this place efficient. And then they do things and change stuff. They're like, well, that didn't work so good. Oh, we need to be more effective. We need to do different things. Okay, let's reorg, right? Okay, we do that. That didn't work. Um, oh, silly us. And we didn't equip the people with the tools. Like, how could you do the work? If I, okay, we'll give you the tools, right? And yeah. then they're like, oh, I didn't give you the right tools because I didn't respect you as a person. I, I just gave you a tool I thought would work for the masses. I treated you as a lump, right. not as a person. Let me trust you and enable you. And then if that's not working, now it comes inside. Yeah. Now it's like, am I showing up as a leader in the way? Am I having the hard conversations with myself and with others? Am I doing the hard work? Am I recharging my batteries? Yeah. And if I'm not doing that, how much do I know myself? Yeah. yeah. If you start from the front, though, inside out, start from I know myself, I'm in action, I'm trusting, I'm equipping, we're designing and, and making this thing hum, it's beautiful. But people start from the outside in because it feels like you can change the number. Right. But the place to change is you, just That's as right. you said. That's right. Give the title of the book again for us. Okay, Ripple, uh, Field Guide for Leadership That Works. Ripple, Field Guide for Leadership That Works. You can find it, what you say on, uh, I'm sure, I know we can go to Trippie Amazon State. and RippleLeader.com. You'll see more stuff at RippleLeader.com. So that, that, RippleLeader.com, ladies yep. and gentlemen, go yep. get the book. <laughs> the, the, you know, because this, this whole Unstoppable program, this whole Unstoppable podcast, it's designed to help the individual um, live life to their fullest potential. And you are not going to be able to do that if you don't know who you are. I, I, I it, it's kind of, it's, it, yeah. it's sort of obvious, but I think there's, there's so much distraction out there and it's easy yeah. to sort of imagine that, that it's the problems are out there. It's not me. Do, do you know, but have you, you've probably heard about the fundamental attribution error? Yes. Yeah. And, and how would you describe that? I got your back if you need me. <laughs> well, you know, man, it's, 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 it's you, you, it's just looking at everything on the outside. Mm -hmm. You know, it's looking at every, it's almost, it's almost as far like the comparison trap. I mean, you could just, yep. you make errors based upon what you see others doing, right. thinking that that is what I'm supposed to be doing. Absolutely. And I think the fundamental, the key part of the fundamental attribution error for me, and it's a very powerful tool that I use for myself, mm -hmm. is that it's our natural human ability because I don't know, I'm not inside you. Right. I'm going to assign negative characteristics to you personally. But if things are happening negative to me, that's my circumstances because I know I'm doing my best, but I don't right. know you're doing your best, right? What's really freaky, it goes the other way around. If something good happens to you, well, that's just lucky circumstances to you. But if it good happens to me, it's because I'm a good person. Yeah. Yeah. We're not using the same measuring mm -mm. meter. Um, and, and that's it. it, it you're ex <laughs> exactly right. Yeah. It's the so cool part is if I see if here's the good part of the way I use it, Ralph, even though it's frustrating, like I am upset with my son for not picking things up and it's a messy house and everything. Yeah. And it's easy for me to get upset with him. Yeah. In reality, it's my subconscious saying, Chris, you don't like the way you're messy. 
and I can't get your attention in here. So I'm going to get your attention out there. Yeah. yeah. And so when I see something that's irritating me about somebody else, it's usually a sign that it's something I need to work on myself. And it's magnified in other people. You see it, I, it's, it's sort of like the, you know, I say, hey, did you like that red car? And now you see red cars everywhere. Yeah. It's like mm-hmm. your, your brain is trying to give you messages to saying, please, yeah. I want yeah. you to pay attention and I can't get your attention in yeah. here. We're upset at other people's inconsistencies. In reality, we're upset it's with our own. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's, that, there's power in that. It's scary because it's like, I don't know if I can change myself, but you can. You can do things different tomorrow, yeah. today. You I can mean, be look, unstoppable. Looking within is a scary thing to do. Mm-hmm. You, you have to admit I'm falling short. I'm, I'm, I'm not what I portray to be. How about that? Mm-hmm. That's scary. Mm-hmm. Too. Yeah. That is really hard because that's um, things that live in the, the shadow of your belief of yourself. So if I believe I'm a good person and I say, um, you know, and I see something in other people they're doing, I, I can't even, I literally, like erase it from my memory that I would never do that because that's not the kind of person I am. So I do not see when I do it. Yeah. Yeah. There, there, are times, stuff, there are times when biases show up that I'm like, I don't have a bias. Yeah. And I absolutely have a, bias. everybody has bias. Everybody. And it's like, how am I dealing with that? Am I using that to our shared advantage or is it something where it's power of me over you or yeah. power of you over me? Or, you know, what are we doing? Again, I see this partnership is we're all in this together. Yeah. We're all in this yeah. together. And if we could ever get in lockstep with one another. You could do, there's nothing you can't do. There is nothing nothing we couldn't do. There's nothing that we could not do. There's not anything we could not overcome if we just got in lockstep with one another. But it takes, um, it does take a, a level of maturity to look within. It does. It, it is hard. And, and I think it's yeah. about, you know, we're, we're all learning and growing. I know uh, my yeah. team one time said, well, what really excites you is just sharing information, Chris. And I, and I could tell that was not sufficient. I mean, yes, I love to share information because if that's going to help somebody, yeah. then we're all better. But actually, it's it's shared learning, like what we're doing right now, Ralph, is that yeah. you're, I'm learning from you, you're learning from me, yeah. and yeah. together we're getting better together. Yeah. And, and that is just thrilling. It's, it's always, uh, in, in um, I think it was today, I think one of the books I was reading this morning might have been um, Ego's the Enemy, Ryan Halliday. Ooh, ooh um, I haven't read that one. Yeah, really good, really good. Nice. Ryan Holiday, Eagles okay. in, um, in one chapter. As a matter of fact, what's the book? It said, always be a student. Mm, yes. And that doesn't mean, it, it means just exactly what you and I talked about. Mm-hmm. But just, we just over the last 30 seconds, two minutes, we talked about. Yep. When, I, I'm, when we talk about being a student, being a student of yourself, your emotions, don't be afraid to look at your biases. Don't be afraid to understand that upsets me because that's in me. That has nothing to do too much with my son. That's mm-hmm. in me. Right. And that's why I'm so upset about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not fun and it's helpful. You know, it's like, right. damn it. I, right. you know, yeah. I could have yeah, really, uh, okay, fine. Yeah. Yeah. Got to cut him some slack because I need to cut myself some slack and try yeah. to work on this or decide it's, it's not worth getting upset about and let go. Yeah. But then if you have to be careful. At, I don't want this to take a whole other direction. You have yeah. to find your tribe. That, yes. And, and prayerfully, you guys who are dating and you guys who are marrying folks, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that you are marrying people or if, if the same like mine is early, it's growing together. Yeah. So that when you come across something, what, why won't you do this? Why won't you do that? <laughs> you can say, honey, because. That's me. And I have to deal with myself first. And she knows exactly what she's talking about. You know, yeah. so it's always, always be a student. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. I like it. I like it. You know, in fact, I, you know, and, and I'm, it's funny, we're talking about the book so much because it's not, I mean, it's sort of sitting on a shelf and we, we give them out and we use them, but uh, that I, that's just something to help people with. However, what was a litmus test I did not realize what happened is this book. And, and um, do I got a copy or something? Yeah, I got a copy right here. So they, your listeners can't see it, but, you know, here it is right here. Yeah, they can see Field, it on YouTube. Field Manual for Leadership that Works. Oh, yeah, on YouTube. Okay, cool. Yeah, so that's yeah. it. Anyway, people would pick this thing up and they'd be like, oh, oh, that's a really cool book. That must be great. You know, they literally look at front and back kind of thing yeah. and they'd be like, yeah, and then kind of page through it a little bit. And they say, yeah. Yeah, this is pretty, pretty fundamental leadership. We need this for our frontline folks. You know, I, I got this down. Our, 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 our leadership team yeah. has this down, you know, yeah. and, and then there was other clients who would pick it up and they look through it and they go, this is awesome. I mean, this, um, I could work on this right here. 
uh, this is something I need to work on. So I, I think we want to do this with our whole team and, yeah. and walk through. And I'm like, I want to work with you. Yeah. Not that the other clients were good people and doing good things, yeah. but the people who were the students yeah. who were who continually a student, I knew that place could learn to be better yeah. versus get to my level and then you'll know everything because yeah. there's no such thing. Especially, we're finding that out today right now, right? Yeah. There is no expert at all going through this because no. we're all going through this for the first time. <laughs> for the first time, there's no finish line. There's no expert. Yep. We have to keep learning. We have to keep growing. You don't mm. grow, you're dying. We know all of the cliches that we say, but exactly. Exactly. We really have to grab hold of it. Um, I'm, I'm talking to you about that. I got to get my hands on that book, man, because um, I, <laughs> I mean, built it up. I hope it's good. You know, you have oh. to tell me I, I want an honest opinion. Like, did oh, this yeah. was this helpful or not? You know, because yeah. I wanted something that's going to really help people. Otherwise, and why the hell say anything? Listen, I am the guy that read from cover to cover, man. I OK. I, yeah. I try to get all the meat off the bone, man. Okay, the, the, the book notes and the field notes in the back, you, you'll see if you like those. Uh, we'll I try to, to get all the meat off the bone, and then I make soup from the bone. <laughs> it's, the kind of, it's the kind of reader I am, man. I want to get all of it. Man. I love that. And, I love uh, that. <laughs> and then uh, really uh, share it with my team, man, because okay. the team has to constantly grow. And I hope the listeners, uh, whether you're your team or you're building a team around you, uh, coaches, leaders, CEOs, entrepreneurs, mompreneurs, dadpreneurs. This is an opportunity to pour into the life of your children and, and understand and have them understand that leading starts with leading themselves. You know, you'll go from a lot of don't do this, don't do this, don't do this to where they just, I'm not doing that because it's not what a leader does. Nice. Teach them more leadership. And if you run a mentoring program, leadership training is for you. It's for everybody. Everybody at the sound of my voice. Hey, man, Trebuchet Group, organizational um, improvement firm. What's the website? Trebuchet.com? Trebuchetgroup.com. Trebuchet.com will get you all these medieval you know, weapons, but okay. uh, trebuchetgroup.com will get you there. How'd you get the name Trebuchet? Well, we wanted something that was really simple that had outsized impact. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a lever, it's a counterweight, but, you know, aligned the right way, you can make an, a tremendous impact. Now, we're talking about good stuff, not destructive. But I didn't know what a trebuchet uh, was. Until it looks like a catapult, but it's simpler. Right it doesn't now. have a spring. It just has a weight on it, you know. And, okay. And, okay. and it's, uh, it's kind of, they pumpkin chuck with those sometimes now. Oh, okay. You know, trebuchetgroup.com. Like, yeah. Go get the book. Go get the book. Ripple. What's it called? Ripple Leadership? Ripple. Uh, just Ripple. 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 Rip. Get the book. Ripple. I got, I always ask, I always ask my guests before I leave. And I think it's an, it's a, it's kind of a fun question. And okay. I didn't prep you for it. I'm I am, I am totally unprepared for this question. Yes. If you could have a billboard anywhere in the world, where would it be? And what would it say? Man, that's interesting. Yeah. We actually, there's a lot fewer billboards in Colorado because people were wanting to see the views of the mountains. Right. So I think, uh, what was that saying that Mr. Rogers used to say? Which one? Uh, well, the 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 the, the uh, original Mr. Rogers. I'm trying to remember. He used to say something like, "You know, you matter. I care about you." Okay. Kind of thing, you know. And I could just see a, a picture of, and this, I guess, I'm a child of of that era. Yeah. When when um, somebody looking into the into my eyes and saying, "You know what? You matter." Yeah. And and uh, I care about you makes a difference. So I'd I'd want to do that. Where would it and, be? Ooh, it probably needs to be a place where somebody people aren't feeling they're cared for. I'm having a trouble. I've seen a lot of them in my <laughs> <laughs> Just, I mean, anyway, I, I've had people say all over the globe. It doesn't matter. Well, I think it'd be all over the globe, especially, especially I'd say in, in cities where people aren't, you know, they're yeah. kind of looking down and they're, and they're not necessarily yeah. connecting with each other. They, there's a lot of energy and vibe, but you know, that it would look just like you and I are looking at each other in the eyes and just say, you know what? You matter. I care about you. That's great, man. I love that. I love that. Chris, thank you for being on the show. This is more, you know, normally I would say it's a pleasure. Ralph, this is a delight. <laughs> this is a delight. I mean, the energy that we get to share, and I can just tell the people who are listening are just going to get so much out of this and all the times that you connect with people. And well, you are that student that, that you, you're, you're leading through example on being a student in a way to help other people do the same. Thanks and for saying you, that, man. You, you're you making a back? difference in the world, man. Thanks, man. Thanks. Will you come back again? No hesitation whatsoever. Yes. 
Man, that's awesome. Guys, you've been listening to the Unstoppable Podcast. I'm Ralph Graves. Go to my website, ralphgravesjr.com. Pick up a copy of my book, Unstoppable. Join the Unstoppable community. we got lessons and growth there. And I'm going to try to get um, Chris on there with me. Maybe we'll do a behind-the-scenes video, a short 15-minute training. Will you do that? I would do that. Will you commit to that for me? Absolutely. Done. See, to see you when. Go. Now, but to you, see have to, you have to join the Unstoppable community to see that. I'll figure that out. Yeah, yeah. So, no, you and I are going to do it. They have to join it to see it. But I like to give them little things like that to, to do that. But, guys, thank you so much for being part of the program. My name is Ralph Graves, Jr. That's been my friend, Chris Hutchison. Let's be unstoppable together. God bless.